Hey, g'day guys. Welcome to Beachside Church. My name's Lee Ellsborough. I'm the pastor here. It's great to have you join us today. It's the first installment of this series called The Plan. Before we get into it, I want to ask a question for you. What do you think about at this time of year, the very start of the year? What goes through your mind? Uh, Perhaps nothing goes through your mind. Perhaps you're on holidays and nothing at all is going to go through your mind except where do I get a mango wee spa from because it's really hot. Or maybe, maybe the start of the year, you think about renovations and what that looks like. How we, What are you going to do to the house and what needs to be done uh, around the place? Maybe it's just simply sitting by the pool. It's sitting by the pool, enjoying a drink and enjoying these beautiful but quite humid days that uh, we're having. Maybe you plan the year, you start to plan the year with good intentions, with, with, with what on hold. You start to have dreams about what the year you want to see uh, happen. Maybe you think about what you're about to face, or even you have uh, might have some New Year's uh, resolutions. This is what I think that perhaps most of us, when we start the year off with all good intentions and with plans in place, Maybe at the end of the year, when we finish December 31st, rather than running over the line, we end up crawling over the line, and the year that we had planned out uh, sort of slipped away, and instead, the year planned us out. So here's the good thing, here's the exciting thing, and as we jump into this series, know this, know this, that the exciting thing is the Lord, the Lord has plans for you. The Lord has really exciting plans for you this year. Plans that when we follow his ways and his works and his words, we'll see us finish the year off rather than crawling over it, maybe just uh, running over that line because we've run right next to God. Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, In the hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. In their hearts humans plan their course. But the Lord establishes their steps. Over the next three weeks, we're going to talk about uh, the plan and how when we have a plan in place from God, we start to move into areas of our life uh, that he had planned for us and that we can enjoy and we can find joy in. We're going to talk about the harvest as well. Do we plan for a harvest? Do we plan for those friends and families that don't know God yet to come and meet God, to get saved, planning for a harvest? Matthew 9 says, the workers are plentiful, but the, uh, the the harvest the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. I thought I got that one wrong. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The last week we're going to look at how we uh, t- maybe jump into this year. How do we actually hand the control back over uh, to God to uh, to really navigate and steer and guide us through? Perhaps is what's going to be another a uh, tricky year. But here's the thing: God cares about you, friends. God cares about you. If you don't hear anything else today, hear this, that God cares, really cares about you. And in fact, he wants you to prosper throughout this year, prosper in so many ways, in a life-giving way, in a holistic way. He wants you to prosper in health and wealth and relationships and in him and in your jobs and in who you are. He wants you to prosper. In other words, he wants you to delight in the things that he has in store for you. Let me say that again. He wants you to delight in in the things that he has in store for you. But friends, as we step into this year, there's actually a discipline that we need. We need to put in place. And it's quite a, uh, uh, it's a good discipline to have. And the discipline is just simply being with Jesus, sitting with Jesus, allowing the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> allowing the Holy Spirit to, to work in you, to guide you in your planning to guide you in your planning and how the year is going to unfold. Again, Proverbs 16 verse 3 this time says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your steps. That's his promise. Commit to the Lord whatever it is you're going to do and he will establish your steps. So we need to make space for this. We need to make space to commit the year to the Lord. We need to sit at his feet to give him our thoughts, our plans, our visions, our dreams and receive direction and receive guidance. Hey, before we go any further, I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to pray that as we start to unpack what this looks like today, that the spirit really is speaking through you giving you direction and giving you guidance. Heavenly Father, we lift up Beachside to you today. We lift up those that are watching right now. Lord, we ask that your spirit speaks to them, guides them, 
directs them as they start the year off, teach them what it looks like to have a year planned right next to you, Lord Jesus. Teach us uh, today what your words are going to say, Lord. May my words be your words and teach us, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you have the word of God, open it up to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. This is where we're going to unpack today. Uh, just a couple, of, uh, a couple of verses in Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, whoop, chapter, uh, verse 22. Hebrews 10 verse 22 says this, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled and cleansed uh, from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting uh, together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. Friends, how good, how good is that? Those couple of verses. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance of faith. With the full assurance of faith. If we rewind a little bit in, chat, in verse 19, what's that full assurance of faith? It says, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, since we have confidence in the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, opened up for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, he says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance of faith. How good is that, friends, that the work of Jesus enables us to draw near to God in having that full assurance of faith. What does that look like for you and me? Well, as we plan the year out, are we planning it out of faith? Do we actually plan to include faith at the very center of everything we do every day throughout the year? It's important to think about this and where we place our faith as we move Forward. You see, in other words, are we prepared to place the year in, in God's hands? Everything the year holds, our jobs and our health and our wealth and our family and our friends and our plans and our holidays and everything else that happens, are we prepared to place that in His hands and leave it in His hands? Hands. The opposite is actually true as well. Maybe uh, we want to hold on to things, hold on to things really, really tightly with our fists, so, so tightly that we, we, the white knuckles start to appear. We try to be in control of our life. We don't want to let control go. Here's the thing, friends. Here's the thing. It's easy to place your faith into things that we can see. In other words, I've got a cup of coffee here. Good morning. I can see this cup of coffee. In fact, I'm going to place my faith in this cup of coffee because I can see this cup of coffee. I see what it is. It's right in front of me. It's easy to do. It's easy to place our faith into things that we can see. The other side of it is also true that it's really hard for a lot of people to place their faith in things that we can't see, or maybe just in one thing, in Jesus, through the full assurance of faith, knowing what he's done on the cross, we can't literally see him, but you know what is written in the word of God, and he did exist, and it was true, and the, the Bible is true, and therefore I'm believing in Jesus, in the unseen. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5, he says this, I walk by faith and not by sight. I walk by faith and not by sight. So, friends, you know what Jesus invites you and I to do this year? He invites us to place our faith in him, to walk right next to him every step of the way this year, placing our faith in him. I walk by faith in Jesus, not by sight, not by the things that are around me. Jesus invites us in. In fact, he says that in James 4, verse 8. He says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Come close to me and I will come close to you. That's a promise he makes. So a good thing to think about, and this is a rhetorical question I want you to sit and ponder in your heart. The question is, where are you going to place your faith this year? Where are you going to place your faith? Is it in Jesus? 
Is it in his words and his works and, and the ways of Jesus? Or is it in the world that's around us and the things that we have that will eventually perish and fade away? You know what, friends? Faith doesn't make things easy, but faith makes things possible. I've been a Christian for a long time, and I know that faith, I've had some hard times throughout my life. My faith has never gone astray, has never dropped away. But you know what? Faith, it doesn't make life easy because life is hard. But you know what? Having faith in Jesus, having faith in Jesus makes things Possible. In fact, in Luke 137, it says that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing at all is impossible with God. There's so many Old Testament stories that I love to read because uh, they, 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 they describe or show uh, people of faith. Marching forward in Jesus' name. One of the stories in particular is the story of Joshua. I love this story. You know the story unfolds. Moses dies. Joshua picks up the Israelites, leads them through the river Jordan at a time of harvest, which means the, the, the river was absolutely swollen with water. So there's a lot of water that, that had to part and move away for them to move forward on dry ground. With the Israelites, 40,000 of them crossed over. And the first battle they faced, the first thing they came up against looked impossible. It was these enormous walls that surrounded Jericho. And they know that uh, uh, Joshua knew that God was leading him, that they had to go to Jericho. But what stood in front of them was an enormous wall, a city behind it that could not be defeated because of uh, this wall. Now, the walls of Jericho, let me paint a bit of a picture. The first section of wall was four meters high, four meter high wall. And behind that wall was a 14 meter large sloping hill that went up. And at the top of that hill was another eight meter wall. That's a lot of wall, four metres, a 14 metre slope, another eight metre wall. Now, to put it in perspective, there was two metres thick of this wall. It was simply impenetrable. Uh, you couldn't get through it. You could not get through it. How big was this wall? Well, it was about nine acres. The circumference of this wall was nine acres, which is around 2,448 car spots long. It's a big wall. It's a really, really big wall. There was simply no way humanly possible that Joshua and his men could gain access to this city because of this large wall that stood in front of them. But you know what, friends? This is where the story gets super exciting. God had a plan for them. God had a plan that perhaps was so crazy that maybe you and I would have looked at the plan and heard the plan and maybe rejected the plan and said, this plan, how's this going to work out? How is this going to work out? I've got no idea, God. Really? You want us to walk around the wall? You know the story. God told Joshua to march around the wall uh, for seven days uh, with his troops, with the 40,000 men. These men are fighters. They're soldiers. But God said, put your weapons down. You don't need weapons today. You need hearts. You need to have a heart that is full of faith, and you need instruments to praise my name. And we know on every day they marched around, and those men, uh, maybe those men, that uh, the, the fighters would have gone home at the end of the day, and their kids around the dinner table would have said, Dad, who did you fight today? Who did you take out? And maybe the father would have said, well, we, 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 we didn't. We, we just walk around a wall. You know, the next day they come home and the children would have said, hey, who did you take out that? And we didn't. We just, again, we just walked around a wall. Um, uh, we're not fighting. Joshua was told us to put our weapons down. We're just carrying harps and instruments and little ukuleles and playing music. Maybe the skepticism as well they would have copped from the, Jer the, the, the people of Jericho looking over the wall, down, <laughs> thinking, what are they doing? They're like, are they going to take our city because they're just marching around a wall with instruments? We have nothing Nothing to worry about. Let's just continue on with our day. Well, if you know the story, Joshua believed God and believed in God's plan, put his faith in things that seemed impossible. God led his people on that seventh day. You know the story. Seven times they walked around that wall and then they blew their trumpets. They shouted victory and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. The walls of Jericho collapsed and Joshua and his men defeated of this city, all in God's plan. Here's the thing, church. Here's the thing. It's a little rhyme that I thought up, but it took me a long time to get this rhyme together. A few false starts, and I gave a test runs with my wife, and she said, oh, you might have to work on that one a little bit. Anyway, it took me a long time. But it's a simple rhyme, and the rhyme is this. Having faith and standing tall and trusting in Jesus won't have you fall. Having faith and standing tall and trusting in Jesus won't have you 
you fall. Putting your faith, planning the year out with faith right in the middle won't have you fall. But friends, you know what? It's not just faith that perhaps we need to include in our plan. It's also faithfulness. It's faithfulness in Hebrews uh, uh, 10.23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess for he promised. What he promised is, uh, is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Friends, the plan is faith, but it's also faithfulness. And I know what maybe some of you guys are thinking. Well, isn't faith and faithfulness the same? Uh, not really. Faith is, is this, uh, faith is a belief. It's putting your faith in something that is external to you, that is outside ourselves. Uh, for Christians all around the world, we place our faith and belief in God and in his promise. That's faith. But faithfulness is this word that sees us focus inside ourselves. It's faithfulness is living in accordance to our faith. Faithfulness is living in accordance to our faith. So if the planning of the year means that we ought to be faithful to our belief, which is having faith in Jesus, we ought to be faithful. How we live represents what we put our faith in. Then maybe this uh, statement, this thing that we can tattoo, we can impress on our heart, maybe the words are no matter what valley comes my way, I will have faith in Jesus. No matter what hardships come my way, I will be faithful to Jesus. No matter what obstacle comes my way, I will be faithful to Jesus. No matter what hurdle comes my way, I will be faithful to Jesus. No matter what happens, this is getting, we're getting, it's getting into us. No matter what happens to me, I will be faithful in Jesus. Now, here's the beautiful thing, friends. The beautiful thing is faithfulness is actually a gift given to us from the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, it says, only by the Holy Spirit do we, we receive these gifts. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Faithfulness is a gift. What does that mean? Faithfulness is a gift. It means that we don't have to strive or, or work hard at it. We let the Holy Spirit work hard in us to get faithful, to be faithful to God. We allow that Holy Spirit in and to cultivate and to grow more faithfulness in our hearts and therefore also in our life. Well, what does it mean to be faithful? There's two things I want to explore quickly. One of them is our walk with the Lord. We're called to be faithful. We're called to be faithful with our walk with the Lord. And I think in Luke 10, Luke 10, remember Luke 10, Mary Walks over to the door, you know, Jesus knocks on the door and Mary opens it. And Mary invites Jesus into her house. She walks him in. They would have maybe gone into the, a room where they would have sat down on the floor. And Mary sat with Jesus, listened to Jesus this year. My encouragement to us all is that we're faithful to God with our walk, that we sit with him, that we sit with Jesus, allow that Holy Spirit to speak and to minister to us, and we get the Word of God out. If our faith is built on this, if our faith is built on the Word of God uh, and everything that happened in the Word of God, I'll walk by faith, like Paul says, and not by sight, and faith comes from hearing, and hearing comes from the Word of God. If we place our faith in this, then this year, friends, I encourage us to sit with this Word of God and read it and learn it and recite it and have the words implant on our heart. Friends, it's not how much we get into the Bible, but it's always how much the Bible is getting in to us. Why is this so important? Why is it so important that we spend more time this year getting into the Word of God and learning it and, 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 and reciting it? Because this year there's going to be a temptations, there's going to be distractions, there's going to be trials come our way. And when they do, when they do, having the Word of God in our hearts, we can recite it, we can learn it, we can fight against those trials and temptations using the power of uh, the Word of God. Jesus in Matthew 4, we know that story. He starts his ministry off in the desert, doesn't he? He drops himself into the desert for 40 days. And we see the enemy tempting and peppering him with all sorts of questions. And the only weapon that Jesus uses is the word of God to defeat those trials that he was facing in the desert. Staying strong and reading scripture, friends, will allow us 
uh, to, to get through and to penetrate and to defeat any trial or temptation that will come our way, of course, with the Holy Spirit helping us every single step of the way. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching and rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped, thoroughly equipped for every good work. How good is that? 2 Timothy 3.16. You know, being faithful with our walk is important, but also faithful with our worship, guys. Faithful with our worship. It's super important to God, worshiping Him, and therefore it ought to be super important to us as well. Now, just for a moment, I know that worship is this holistic word that wraps everything around the word worship, our life, our body, uh, everything we do is an act of worship to God. But just for a minute, I want to talk about the worship in a songful uh, sense, in the way we praise and lift up our Heavenly Father uh, through song. Uh, Martin Luther says this, the gift of language combined with the gift of song was given to man, that he should proclaim the word of God through music. You know what? There ought to be an excitement, friends, when we come together and we, we worship our Heavenly Father. Why? Because when we worship God, when we come together, whether it's in your car with the windows up, driving to work and music's pumping or in a church on a Sunday or, or, or the tennis hall on a Thursday night when we come together to praise His name, when we worship God, walls come tumbling down. We've just read that in the, in, through Joshua's experience. When we worship him, walls fall, the walls collapse. When we worship God, the enemy is defeated. You know, when we worship God, there is absolutely no room in our heart for anything else to come in and enter it because our hearts are full of praise as we worship him. Now, you might be sitting here saying, hey, listen, Lee. Uh, you haven't heard me sing. I'm not a very good singer. I don't really like to sing because I can't sing very well. Hey, guess what? Just wait till you get to heaven. If you think you're a great singer, wait till you get to heaven and stand next to one of those legions of angels and hear them sing. I reckon they're going to have the most beautiful angelic voice. But more than that, God doesn't really care how good you sing. He wants to hear our hearts. God wants to hear our hearts filled with joy, filled with worship, singing our praises to him, Matt Redman, who's an incredible singer, songwriter, uh, many of us have sung uh, quite a few of his songs. The Heart of Worship was one of his songs. He writes this, he says, in the end, worship can never be a performance. He says, something you and I pretend or even try to put on. It's got to be, he says, worship has got to be an overflow of the heart. Worship is about getting personal with God and drawing close to him. And drawing close to him. Friends, we're going to move more into some corporate times of worship this year. We're going to be meeting in the tennis hall more as we worship God and come together and leave space in our weeks to worship him, songful worship collectively together as a church. Why? Because we will be faithful to God no matter what. We will be faithful to him and we want to worship him. Worship, friends, is a powerful, powerful tool. I'd love to hear Marcus and his comments on this as well. He's got a heart and his soul that to worship. He does such a brilliant job in leading the worship team. And I can't wait to see what God's going to do in and through him and the worship team uh, this year. Worship is a powerful tool. It is a powerful weapon that we can use to defeat the enemy and his schemes, and then therefore we can place God on high through our worship. Friends, as we wrap up today, my prayer is this uh, for all of us. My prayer is that as we march into 2022 and, and even the, 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 the disjointed start that we've already had, my prayer is that we are, uh, that we're a church that, is, that has faith, that your faith will grow this year, will grow more and more, will grow stronger and stronger as you keep your eyes fixed on him, as you have a laser beam focus on him. My other prayer is that this year unfolds, that we can all be faithful, that we can let the Spirit work inside of us, cultivating us and growing faithfulness in our hearts uh, to keep us uh, growing and loving our Lord more and more throughout the year. 
Uh, friends, let's pray as we march forward together, uh, putting God first and at the front of everything we do. Now, Heavenly Father, we, Lord, we just thank you so much for your words that they bring life. They change us from the inside out. Lord, I pray for everyone who's watching today, Lord Jesus. I pray that uh, for the beach side, for other people who are watching in, Lord, that your uh, spirit uh, grows our faithfulness inside, that we can become more faithful to you. Lord, I pray for our faith this year, that we remain faith, uh, our, uh, faithful to you. Lord, that our eyes are fixed on you. Our faith is in you this year, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that your spirit strengthens us. Your spirit grows us this year to become the people that you have made us to be. We pray all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. 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 Guys, God bless. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week at Illinois.